Show episode number 101. Ah, going back to the basics, I am your host Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hi, Norman. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you doing, man? I've been okay. Been a long week trying to get a place to work. Place to work. Wait, you're working for the MBS show. Where, where are you going moving now? I don't know yet. Let's see where somebody would want me. We want you. You know what? You're fired. Okay, come back. You're fired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But anyway, seriously, how have you been doing, man? I've been surviving. Ah, okay. Uh, how has the hype meter for last week's episode been treating you? Oh, it's been good. I mean, people have been really, really excited about it. So, yeah, it's carried through as well. Yeah, I'm still hype. And I I'm, I think I'm just getting um, over the tiredness of the hype. Now, now I'm really tired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but still, but still. Uh, let's move on. Uh, unfortunately for this week, we don't have a guest. We decide to take a break. Well, my definition of taking a break is not having a guest. <laughs> but anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. And in today's news time, Buck 2014 announced location and dates. For those who are wondering what's Buck, Buck is an international convention for the Brony fandom held in the United Kingdom since 2012. It has attracted over 1,200 bronies from around the world last year and had guests from the show such as Cindy Morrow, show scriptwriter, Michelle Krieber, voice of Apple Bloom, and talented musician Amy Keating Rogers, our previous guest, and show scriptwriter, and Megan McCartney, show scriptwriter and season 3 and 4 showrunner. This year, Buck will be held on August 22nd till the 24th at the Manchester Central Convention Centre. Links can be found in the show notes. And then, have any money to go to Buck? I wish I did. Well, if I start working, maybe I would. I don't know. Yay! We're not paying you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I so want to go to Buck, man. You know, because from what I heard, our other host, James Cork, is planning to go there. And he is running a fundraising program where you donate this much money and he'll draw you something. Yep, usual trade-off. Speed Commission as well. So yeah, go on over to James' stream and he's holding it. And he won't disappoint you. He does a damn good job because if he can draw my OC, he can draw anything. Which he will never do again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he may do it only once. <laughs> but seriously, if you do have the chance to go to Buck, you should go. Because this year, I got no idea. They just announced a place and a date. And that's good enough for me. <laughs> Oh boy, and so many uh, UK bronies that we could, that we could meet there. I'm sure that you know. I hope Scribbler will be there, and uh, yeah. Nathan Barlow as well, oh, and uh, yeah, yeah. plenty it, more. Yeah, full papers. Yeah, full papers has to be there. Yeah, fully. And you know what? From what I heard, um, mm-hmm. James is going to be there, and Sketchy Sound is going to be there. Oh, Sketchy as well. Uh-huh. And if, if I'm not mistaken, Sketchy is kind of um, part of the crew there, so yeah, he has to go. <laughs> Oh, it means he'll be performing. Good, good. Uh, kind of. He'll be doing stuff for the Tumblr blog. You know, us Britannia Tumblr blog. Yeah, and probably he'll be, you know, the one before the announcement. Just play some chord and get that chang. Will the car of number WPN6492 please repark your vehicle? Thank you. <laughs> I don't think that will happen, but you know, it will be interesting if that did happen. <clears throat> but anyway, if you're going to buck, links can be found in the show notes for more information. And moving on to the next news, pre-order for Pony Books is available on Amazon. Last week we talked about the Pony Books that will be coming out this year. Those books were the collectible poster book, the Journal of the Two Sisters, written by Amy King Rogers, and the Daring Do Adventure Collection, written by A.K. Yearling. Now pre-orders are available on Amazon for the Journal and the Daring Do book set. The price for the Journal is. $15, and the Daring Do book set is $80. Links can be found in the show notes. And then, I'm surprised at the second writer for the news here, like the Daring Do set. I'm surprised at the writer. She's real. <laughs> oh my god, she's real. <laughs> people, people are complaining that, oh, I can't believe that you changed Daring Do into a real character. Now Daring Do is a real person. Mm. <laughs> 
That was a dream come true. Like if you read the first few pages of Through the Mirror by GM Barrow, it says dedicated to anyone who wants to know what it feels like to be a pony. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> uh, okay, that's an insight. No, but seriously, I would really love to know who is the real writer for <laughs> Daring Do Adventure. Hmm. Who writes the Daring Do episodes? Maybe that's what's behind yeah. it. I don't know. But no, but seriously, but seriously, um, I, I can't wait for the Journal of the Two Sisters because Amy Keating Rogers told us a lot about the book. Well, kind of told us a lot and at the same time little because she can't talk about it <laughs> because it's not out yet. And it's full of spoilers. I know. And I want to read it so bad because from what she told us is this. The book is related to the episode where... Each pony writes their journal entry from the show, and you can read it live. In Pinkie Pride, Pinkie Pie writes something in the journal. But you don't hear it. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, you, she didn't tell us. That is going to be in the book that you are going to buy. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then you open the first page, and it's like, Celestia just writes, Dear Diary, the box was a hoax. <laughs> There's uh, nothing inside. Oh, uh, yeah. But still, I can't wait for that. I can't wait for that book. And the Daring Do would set. What do you think about it, then? I think this is the beginning of something new. Like, following AK Yearling, which I have a very strong inkling is just a reference to J.K. Rowling. <laughs> there was a very similar thing that I used to be in the Harry Potter fandom for mm-hmm. a while. They had these two books in the Hogwarts library. One was called uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which is apparently in the show it has a life of its own and you better not mess with the book. Mm-hmm. And there's another book called Quidditch Through the Ages. Now, somewhere between the fourth and fifth book of Harry Potter, these two books came out. Well, really... Yeah, as real books you can purchase, and I have one of them. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, in fact, they were sold for charity. Oh, cool. Yeah, they, they came out as real books like from the show, and then you read it, it's full canon, like you know, the manual how to play Quidditch. <laughs> okay. I was like, can I try this? Mom, where's the broom? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but okay, um, with the Daring Do book here, I do like the concept, then, but with the Daring Do book here, um, it's a three-set book, and it's priced at almost $80. Now, if you think about it, if a book like the journal is 15 bucks, 15 times 3 is going to be 30, 55. Yep. Am I right? Yeah. 55. Yeah, about that much. Yeah. So, what does this mean for the book set? Like, my goodness, it's like almost at 80. They're selling three books, if I remember right. So, it's like 25 bucks per book so wow that's a lot of money yeah so either the book's going to be really thick like a harry potter novel i'm sure that they're hardcover yeah i hope so for the price that i'm going to be paying you know you never know it probably the third book is that little safe thing where she kept that fancy ring and it's got a combination mm. lock on the spine i forgot to mention this but the daring do book set will come with a daring do pony figure and it's said going to be gold so it could be gold plated or it's made of gold so who knows if it's made of gold it'll be 2500 it won't be so if it's made of gold for 75.99 people will buy it throw the book away melt down the little thing and sell it i don't think people are going to melt the gold it could be just plated so yeah yeah it could because if it's solid people are going to melt it you can't you, you won't go two ways <sighs> yeah uh, no Anyway, let's move on to the next news. Dan, you want to try this one out? Oh, yes. Actually, I'm not very familiar with this. Hmm, Uncharted Territory. I don't watch this, but Nostalgia Critic has used the pony gag in review. If you don't know, our host Norman and James Corbett, they're big fans of Nostalgia Critic. And uh, I like to watch him once in a while, but I'm not a big fan. His review styles tend to tilt to the negative side. I think I should start watching this guy. And he's very funny and has an earnest feel to them. Now, in his recent movie review, he reviewed the 2007 Ghost Rider movie starring Nicolas Cage. And at the mark of 24, sec- 24 minutes and 10 seconds, a pony reference can be seen. And the gag featured Fluttershy and Ghost Pony Rider. And at the 31st minute and 5 second mark, it featured Flutterbat and the Ghost Pony Rider. The links can be found in the show notes. So, <laughs> Norman, did this shock you? Kind of. Like, he did mention uh, a few My Little Pony reference in the show, like... Oh, it's like a My Little Pony fanfiction or something like that. And I was not expecting to see a full-fledged animated pony gag, like what he did. And it threw me off and it, I had an awe to my face, like, what? What? Oh my god. <laughs> shout out. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't even know if it's a shout out. It's like... It's a gag. It's a gag. Yeah, it's a gag. It's, it's a, a gag, but it's a, real, it's a really well done gag. And it's not being mean-spirited or anything. It's just a gag. 
and it, and if you haven't seen it, go watch it, guys. What are you waiting for? It's it's really good. Yeah, go check out the link. It's in the show notes. Uh, the only thing that I've seen recently is that uh, tentacle monster from the Trees of Crowd episode and how it's attacking Twilight and Cadence. And then suddenly you see this clip from <laughs> Mustacha Critic going, you know, for kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, that I have not seen yet, but but still, but still, uh, his reviews tend to be negative. But he's done it for laughs and jokes, and it's not really mean spirited or anything like that. But overall, the jokes they're fun, they're fun, and you should go watch it if you can. And then, if you want to watch the the Sorcerer Critic, this would be a good one to start off. Okay, I'm gonna give it a shot. Okay. Man. And, uh, yep, moving on to the next little news topic. Funko, again, now plans to release Best Background Pony vinyl figure with hat. I'm talking about Applejack here. And with the release of Funko's Twilight Sparkle and GNPT figures, fans are wondering which pony will they make next. So on the Funko Fanatic forums, a user by the name Show Me Nodder has posted some prototype images of Twilight and Trixie. And in the same picture, a prototype version of Applejack can be seen really distinctively because she has her hat on. So now, the question is, who will join Applejack? So find out more in the links provided in the show notes. Norman, who do you think is going to join AJ? Mm, I've read some rumors way back when and they said that they're planning to make a Big Mac and Discord. So the high chance of Big Mac being next with Applejack is high. Hmm, that works. Yeah. And you know what? Big Mac would be a really interesting mole because he has a big build. And, well, let's just say that out of all the pony figures that are out, Dr. Hoof is the only male pony. And I don't think they can reuse that mole. Because of the tie. And the body. Yeah, true. That's right. Yeah, the body build is really big. And it'll be interesting. And next thing you know, oh, we're going to reuse the ball. Here's Shining Armor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How do I put this? Shining Armor body build is not the same as Big Mac. But uh, what do I know? But Dan, what about you? I, I, I... I really would know because it's like <sighs> Applejack and the rest of the main six are out. Not yet. Rarity's not out yet. Yeah, maybe Rarity might go with it. You know how they don't get along. But Funko likes to do this. They usually don't release the main six at the same time. It's usually main six with background character. Main six with background character. They did this with Rainbow Dash and Derpy. Fluttershy with the Doctor. Pinkie Pie with... Pinkie Pie was with Bon Bon or Lyra, I think, right? Something yeah, like that. Right. Pinkie Pie with Lyra. And then Bon Bon with Spitfire. And DJ Poon Tree with Octavia. That's a... Uh, okay. <laughs> but still, but still. Um, my prediction is going to be Applejack and Big Mac. I don't know. I, I really don't know what's going to come. I, I have no idea what direction Funko takes in this. Like, any other fan favorites? Because Derpy's out and, uh, hmm, since that's the case. I don't know, cheese sandwich? <laughs> I hope so. It'll be fun. And, yeah, it will be fun, yeah. And fun fact, uh, cheese sandwich mole is a totally different mole from Doctor Who's. Yeah. And you know what? If that comes out, Wow. The next batch will be Flim and Flam because they have similar bodies. Yeah, I don't mind that, man. Like, oh, well, mm, I, I don't mind. Can't wait. Yeah, that could work. So you know what? Flim and Flam may be the villains, but they're entertaining villains. Yeah, maybe one. Maybe suddenly they'll switch to the villain sign. Then the Discord one will come out. Oh, oh yeah. That'd oh, be yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's it for news time. And moving on to the next topic. This week, we don't have any guests and we don't have any topics. So we should probably end this. But you know what? Ending it now would be a shame. And to say sorry to one Kelvin Devska, I derp by missing your question. Sorry, man. So we're going to take your questions this week. This is going to be interesting. Indeed. So Dan, why don't you read this one? All right. Only read the next few questions after answering the one before. All right. Do not read ahead. Who's going to stop me? <laughs> also, give short answers if possible. You're asking too much of me, my friend. All right. <laughs> Question one, name three of your best friends. Are you trying to kill me here? <laughs> uh, no problem, Dan. You can answer however you like. I'm going to go to the magic mirror pond and pull three pinky pies out. What about you? Uh, me. Let's see. You know what? I'm going to give the obvious answer. Um, you, James, and Charlie. Okay, so one of this is the MBS show crew and the other one is uh, three pinky pie army. Question two. 
Your three friends and you are stuck in a zombie apocalypse. Yay! Feels here. <laughs> Give them each a role that best suits their strength, building barricades, fashioning weapons, etc. Okay, Norman, you go first. Charlie will be the doctor. That's um, a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, James would be the guy who gives moral support, and you will be the distraction. Okay. What about you? Me, I have three pinky pies. They can break fourth walls. Now, don't screw it then. <laughs> okay, first of all, Calvin, you have to understand, pinky is a weapon. Okay, there's no two things about it. So, yeah, you don't have to fashion weapons for it. She is the weapon. One of them operates the weapon, one of them reloads the weapon, one of them is the weapon. Problem solved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, question three. Friend number two has gotten the zombie virus. Will you A, kill him, or B, let him live? How screwed are you? Let's see. Uh, did I mention... Who did I mention in order? <laughs> I think you mentioned... Uh, I, it's either James or me. Yeah, well, okay, I'm more likely to get it because I'm, the, I'm the, the second guy, but yeah, you, have yeah. to, you have a medic on the team. Okay, okay, here's the thing, here's the thing. Let's see, let's see. Will let him live? But the thing is, we'll restrain his movement. Yes, we'll restrain his movement and let him follow us until he cannot do much. Yes, that's what we do. Straight jacket, yay. Yay, what about you? Well, friend number two has gotten a zombie virus. Okay, fine, I have two more pinky pies. Leave her alone. <laughs> Leave her alone. <laughs> right either. Across, she's not the real one. First one was the real one. So yeah, she can go back to the mirror pond. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay, so um, next one. The hospital... The mall or outskirts of town as your first destination. Mall. I don't like hospitals. I like the outskirts of town, but I prefer the mall. So, you know, I'm going to be camping out in uh, the Watsons or the drugstore. You know what? The best plan is to go to a mall, secure the mall, um, lock down the mall, and make that your second home. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of stuff. You just go to McDonald's and turn on the fryer. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know what? If the fryer doesn't work, there's a convenience store filled with chips and whatever so yeah go there and get stuff and uh the last one so how long do you think you're gonna live based on these choices oh god uh based on my choices well i got no idea um what about you then well pinky will outlive me so go figure yeah as for me i got no idea it's one of those situations where hmm this is not real i'll just press the reset button but anyway thanks a lot kelvin for this interesting question. Yes. <laughs> Where did you get that from, Kelvin? <laughs> but you know what? Awesome on you, man. And let's move on to the next topic. Shout outs. My shout out goes to you, Dan. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, no problem, man. It's great to be here as well. Awesome. And my second shout out goes to Ace Sleeves. Thank you for sending me the My Little Pony trading card games or the collectible card games. It's awesome and I can't wait to play it. Once I know how to play it. Anyway, thank you, man. You're the man. And what about you, Dan? Oh, well, a couple of shout-outs. First of all, last week, I, I was quite caught up with the Michael Morona's campaign, and I'm still really, really proud to see it going so strong. So big shout-out to all the people involved in the Michael Morona's campaign. To Michael, you know, I heard that, you know, he's, he's t his toes started to wriggle. So that's, that's a really, really great optimistic sign. So, Michael, come on, pull through. I know you can do it. And uh, one more thing I forgot to say last week is I want to give a shout out to all the Philippine bronies for making my stay there really, really great. Because I didn't, I, it was something really, I would dare say, unexpected. You know, I was going there, I expected to be, you know, just be tossed in a motel and just um, find my way around Manila. But no, they took good care of me. They took me around and we stay in their houses. So yeah, big shout out to the Philippine bronies for making a great, great trip. Awesome on them. That's cool. Anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, links are in the show notes. You can reach the MBS Show Twitter account at the MBS Show. Sweetiebot will tweet about editing the show and stuff related with the show. And you can follow me at Norman Sanzo. I will tweet about food, toys, and whatever tickles my fancy. Recently, I bought a bag of chips, and it's not full. I wonder why... And what about you, Dan? Oh, well, you can follow me at STPINKIE St. Pinky on Twitter. And if you have a job offer, please send it my way. I will sing for food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. Links are in the show notes. I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Daniel Anthony. And we'll see you guys next week, hopefully with a full cast. Bye!